Good evening, America. What we witnessed last night wasn't just a town hall. It was the political equivalent of a slow motion train wreck. Kamala Harris, the sitting vice president of the United States, who wants to be your next commander in chief. Well, she faced real Americans with real questions and what happened next was nothing short of extraordinary. Even CNN's own panels couldn't hide their dismay. Word salad city. That's what they called it. But there is something deeper happening here, something that explains the desperate Hitler comparisons just hours before the debacle. Let's get into this. And of course, you know, countless Americans will waste time, energy and money this year trying to reduce wrinkles, but failing because they missed the real problem. A decrease in their natural collagen reserves. So let me explain. Scientists found that after the age of 20, your body produces 12% less collagen each decade. If you experience sagging skin or wrinkles for your age, you may be collagen deficient. That's why I use this magic secret powder. Get it today while it's 51% off at healthwithgary.com. You'll find the link in the description below. We thank our sponsors for making this show possible, and we thank you for your donations. If you want to donate, you can find a link in the description. All right, let's get into this here. Oh, yes, there's so much to get to. Uh, let's just, should we start with this first cringe moment? I mean, Kamala's known for her cringe. I will share you 13 seconds of pure cringe. Let's get things done. And let's not be afraid of having a little joy <laughs> to the point of, you know, what gives you, what makes you feel good about your work. Let's, let's do it in a way that is grounded in optimism. Let's get things yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, let's get things done. Let's get you out of office. Uh, Kamala Harris participated in a one-person debate last night. That's uh, what they're saying on CNN. And she lost. She was asked a direct question and can only provide circular world word salad answers. Let's listen to the first bomb that dropped on CNN. Donald Trump, uh, listen, Kamala Harris participated in a one-person debate last night, and she lost. Okay, she was asked direct questions, and she provided very circular answers. Uh, our, my colleagues uh, Van Jones and David Axelrod and others noted that, you know, she provided word salad answers. An, you know, Anderson would ask her specifically direct questions and she didn't provide an answer to them. She, when, when asked, Anderson asked the best question all night. Why didn't you do this four years ago? Why haven't you been doing this? Ten minute answer didn't answer the question. So what she did last night, I don't think helped her cause at all. I think people were looking for you know, how are you going to, you heard the one woman, how are you going to make my life better? That wasn't provided. Donald Trump bad is not going to get you to the White House. I hate to break. Yeah. Hate to break it to you, Kamala. But let's see. This is Fox News headline CNN panel critical of Kamala Harris town hall performance word salad city. The question being asked, why now is the mainstream media turning on Kamala Harris? The CNN panel ripped her performance at last night's town hall. What's going on? Do they know something that we don't? Servana Hernandez says yesterday we got preemptively hit with the Trump as Hitler and 30 year old sexual assault accusations because Dems know how bad Kamala's town hall performance was going to be. And she did not disappoint. Here is wild times when Anderson Cooper's fact checking Kamala Harris on her town hall. Paul, even CNN knows she's going to do a photo. Under Donald Trump, you criticized the wall more than 50 times. You called it stupid, useless, and a medieval vanity project. Is a border wall stupid? Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. <laughs> so remember, Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for it? Come on, they didn't. How much of that wall did he build? I think the last number I saw is about 2%. And then when it came for time for him to do a photo op, you know where he did it? In the part of the wall that President Obama built. But you're agreeing so to a bill on. that would earmark $650 million <laughs> to continue building that we, wall. I, I pledge that I am going to bring forward that bipartisan bill to further strengthen and secure our border. Yes, I am. But and I'm going to work across the aisle to pass Com a comprehensive bill that deals with a broken immigration system. I think Jackson's question, part of it was to acknowledge that America has always had migration, but there needs to be a legal process for it. <laughs> People have to earn it. And that's the point that I think is the most important oh, wow. point that can be made, which is we need a president who is grounded in common sense and practical outcomes. Like, let's just fix this thing. Let's just fix it. Why is there any ideological oh, wow. perspective on this? Let's just fix the problem. It, it, to fix the problem, you're, you're doing this compromise bill. It does call for $650 million that was earmarked under Trump 
to actually still go to build the wall. I'm not afraid of good ideas where they occur. You know, so you don't think it's stupid anymore? I think what he did and how he did it did, was, did not make much sense because he actually didn't do much of anything. I just talk, talked about that wall, right? We just talked about it. He didn't actually do much of anything. But you do want to build some wall. I want to strengthen our border. Under Donald Trump. You- <laughs> so she won't say, I want to build the wall. She just won't. She won't even utter those words. Oh, man. Total word salad. Here is conservative brief posting that Kamala's performance during CNN town hall last night. She ran for president. Well, let's just go to it. Other job ran for president back in 2019. Yeah. That is the current vice president of the United States that when faced with issues of the country says she's still thinking about things. Yeah. I mean, that, that, I, in any other job, yeah. you're asking us to hire you and you don't know the answers to the and questions. 12 days away from. A yes. Why are you? Why are you 12 days out and you don't know how to fix the border? Why are you 12 days out and you still don't have an answer on how to lower the price of groceries? I mean, that makes zero thing. In and any and other are, job, it would be disqualified. Why are these jobs so important now to secure right. the border, to fix right. the grocery prices? Why weren't they over the last three and a half years when she was saying the border is secure? Yeah, great question. Why now? Catastrophic town hall. CNN drops a scathing fact check on Kamala Harris claims about fracking. Let's watch this point. This point. Spence with this in- so first, let's listen to a claim the vice president made about her policy shift on fracking. I've been very clear. We kind of dispensed with this in 2020. I am not going to ban fracking. I did not as vice president. In fact, as vice president, I cast the tie-breaking vote that now has opened up more fracking leases. And you point out, too, when you're running for vice president in 2020, uh, you were not talking about banning fracking. But No, no, no Anderson, I, I pledge that I would not ban fracking. Right, I know. It is not true that Harris pledged in 2020 that she would not ban fracking as president. Her campaign has explained that she was referring to her comments in a VP debate with Mike Pence. But here's the thing about that debate. Nowhere in it did Harris say she had changed her own previous 2019 support for a fracking ban. What she did say in that debate twice was that Joe Biden, the head of the Democratic ticket at the time, would not ban fracking himself. I have the quotes here. She said, Joe Biden will not ban fracking, end quote. And then she said, quote, Joe Biden will not end fracking. He has been very clear about that, end quote. She didn't say Kamala Harris wouldn't ban fracking as president. That made sense at the time. He was the candidate. But contrary to her claim tonight to Anderson, she didn't, did not pledge until this year that she personally would not support a fracking ban. Now let's listen to something she said tonight about former President Trump's border wall. Okay, we just saw that clip. But dude, the fact that CNN is coming out and fact checking her in real time, not just at this town hall, but in post town hall. This is bad. Here's New York post CNN panel roast Kamala Harris for failing to set out her vision after PA town hall word salad city. Here she is. I may not have the answer about it. So I may not be quick to have the answer as soon as you ask it about a specific policy issue sometimes, because I'm going to want to research it. I'm going to want to study it. I'm kind of a nerd sometimes, <laughs> I confess. So I may not be quick. To- uh, may not be quick. Yeah, well, you better be quick if you're uh, going to be president of the United States. Here's another point. Harris Faulkner tweeted this out. This happened as CNN town hall voters asked salient and spot on questions. Kamala Harris replying with a rehearsed set of talking points. Percent of America. When you talk about rich people paying their fair share, mm-hmm. can you be more specific? Income taxes are already on a graduated scale, where the more you make, the higher percentage you pay in taxes. So the rich are paying a disproportionate amount in taxes as it is. Over 40% of Americans don't pay any income taxes. Also, the really high earners may move their money offshore. If there are disincentives in the U.S., this could impact the economy. I would like to hear more nuts and bolts about your economic plans. Sure. Thank you, Pam. Um, So first of all, it is the case in the United States of America that billionaires on average pay less taxes as a percentage than teachers and firefighters and nurses. I'm talking about hard workers like like pound the street. Have I'm, some success. I'm, yes. No, no, no. I yes. understand. But I want to just let's not set the, the really let, high. Let's set the scene. Right. Yeah. Wow. So 
when I say that the the, the richest among us mm-hmm. need to pay their fair share, okay, I am referencing that, and I I need to reference that because sadly Donald Trump, when he was president, gave tax cuts to the richest, to billionaires and big corporations, which added trillions of dollars to our deficit. So okay. that sadly mm-hmm. needs to be said in a way that should be obvious to your point, but is not given what he did. Now, in terms of what we need to do to bring down taxes, I have pledged and have a plan for a middle class tax cut that would affect 100 million Americans, including, for example, what we will do around small businesses in terms of tax deductions, in terms of what small businesses are now being mired in, in terms of a bureaucracy around they have to fill out and do their taxes in a way that actually holds them back. Part- <laughs> she doesn't say anything. She's not giving any answers at all. My plan includes extending a middle class tax cut that would include a $6,000 <sighs> tax cut, essentially a child tax credit. For- yeah, see, she says that because she knows that's a buzzword that people actually understand. Parents and young parents in particular, knowing that the vast majority of our parents have a natural desire to parent their children well, but not always the resources. So this is going to include an extra amount of just money that people can use to pay for child care, which is far too expensive for too many working pa- families. And part oh. of the issue here is this. We cannot and I will not raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. Uh, we've heard all this before, haven't we? Let's get on with it, shall we? There's more. There's so much more. After feeling the backlash of mocking a Christian at a rally who shouted Jesus as Lord Kamala Panders during her town hall about her call to her pastor. Remember when she uh, kicked those Christians out of her rally? Baptist Church. The first phone calls you made after President Biden announced that he was dropping out was to your pastor. Yes. And I'm wondering if it wasn't a confessional, if you could say what that conversation was like. Well, my pastor, Reverend Dr. Amos C. Brown of Third Baptist Church. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was it was an extraordinary day that Sunday when um, the president. Oh, she makes me so sick. She thinks she can just smile and giggle just like a little girl melting her daddy's heart. Right. Yeah, she can do no wrong. Just look at my giggles and my smile. Hee hee, daddy, please. Yeah. Yeah, she ain't going to charm anyone with this garbage. Called me. And I, I instinctively understood the gravity of the moment, the seriousness oh. of the moment. I didn't. So I called the Baptist church because I needed Jesus. Yeah, sure you did predict or know exactly how that day would play out. And obviously now it's been three months since I've been at the top of the ticket, actually three months as of yesterday. Well, three months. Yeah. Three months. That's how long she's been campaigning when she, since she was, was installed in the top of the ticket after they kicked Joe Biden to the curb. <laughs> I'm glad she's in this ticket now, but I just- I'm glad she's doing these interviews because the more she opens her mouth, the more she puts her foot in it and even CNN calling her out. This is Glorious. Called him. I I needed that spiritual kind of um, connection. I needed that advice. I needed a prayer. And I needed a prayer. Yeah, you definitely need prayer, Kamala Harris. You definitely need some prayer. Okay, so this is a clip Colin Rugg put together. Kamala Town Hall event was a complete disaster. We've got seven of the worst moments of the night. And then we've got six of the worst roasts from CNN. So let's, uh, let's just, let's, okay, let's play the seven worst moments of the night. I'm sure we've probably played some of them already, but let's see what Colin has to say here. What weaknesses do you bring to the table and how do you plan to overcome them while you're in office? That's a great question, Joe. Um, Well, I am certainly not perfect. (laughs) So let's start there. And, um, I think that I perhaps a weakness, some would say, but I actually think it's a strength is I really do value having a team of very smart people around me who bring to my decision making process different perspectives. I, um, my team will tell you, I am constantly saying, let's kick the tire on that. Let's kick the tires on it. 
Is there? <laughs> Let's pause that for a second. Her team is constantly quitting because they can't stand working for her because she's a tyrant. The turnover rate in her vice presidential office is atrocious. Yeah, they're kicking the tires to make sure they can get in their car and escape. Thing you can point to in your life, political life or in your life in the last four years that you think is a mistake that you have learned from? I mean, I've I, I've made many mistakes. Um, and I agree. They range from, you know, <laughs> if you've ever parented a child, you know, you make lots of mistakes, too. Um, in my role as vice president, I mean, I've probably worked very hard at making sure that um, I am well versed on issues and. Um, I think that is very important. It's a mistake not to be well-versed on an issue and feel compelled to answer a question. So you've been in the White House for, for four years. You were vice president, not the president. But why wasn't any of that done for the last four years? <laughs> well, there was a lot that was done, but there's more to do, Anderson. And, and I'm pointing out things that need to be done that haven't been done but need to be done. Thank you, Eric. And you're absolutely right. You know it. I know it. I think most Americans know it price of groceries is still too high. Well, I may not be quick to have the answer as soon as you ask it about a p specific policy issue sometimes because I'm going to want to research it. I'm going to want to study it. I'm kind of a nerd sometimes, <laughs> I confess. 2022, 2023, there were record border crossings. You, your administration took a number, hundreds of executive actions. It didn't stem the flow. Numbers kept going up. Finally, in 2024, uh, just in June, three weeks before the, last, the first presidential debate with Joe Biden, uh, you institute executive actions that had a dramatic impact, really shut down people crossing over. Why didn't your administration do that in 2022, 2023? First of all, you're exactly right, Anderson. And as of today, we have cut the flow of immigration by over half. In fact, the numbers I saw most recently, mm. illegal <laughs> immigration. But if is it was low. that easy on, with that finish. executive me... action, why not do it in 2022, well, 2023? Because we were working with Congress and hoping that actually we could have a long-term fix to the problem instead of a short-term fix. You couldn't have done one and the, both at the same time? Well, here's the thing. I, we <laughs> have to understand that ultimately this problem is going to be fixed through congressional action. Is a border wall stupid? <laughs> Well, let's talk about oh, Donald Trump and that border wall. <laughs> yeah, so, we saw that already. <laughs> oh, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. Let's not talk about it if it's stupid or not. Okay, let's get to the CNN reaction. These are the six points that uh, Colin Rugg brought out. CNN Scott Jennings says Kamala Harris is a double threat. Well, there's more. Let's go. Even Axelrod. Ooh, that's not good. Thing. I mean, she's like a true double. When she doesn't want to answer a question, her habit is to kind of go to world, word salad city. And she did that on a couple of answers. One was on Israel. Anderson asked a direct question. Would you be stronger on Israel than Trump? And uh, there was a seven minute answer, but not, none of it related to the question he was asking. She doesn't have to be flawless, but she has to give you something. I mean, she's like a true double threat. You know, she's terrible on her feet when she gets unexpected questions. And simultaneously, she can't even answer the expected questions. It's nothing, nothing, nothing. You'd think she'd be prepared to do this by now. You know, what's a mistake you've made? Nothing. What's a weakness you have? Nothing. What's the first law you want to pass? Nothing. What's a policy difference between you and Joe Biden? Nothing. Over and over and over. Empty, empty, empty. If she were an animal, she'd be a duck-billed platitude. But look, it's a total I world Focused a lot more on Donald Trump, I think it's fair to say, than she did on uh, many specifics in terms of what she would do uh, as president. But she did go into uh, some of her plans for small businesses. Well, I'll just tell you what I'm hearing from people who I have been talking to, uh, and that is that uh, if her goal was to close the deal, they're not sure she did that. And, you know, some people have asked, is she being held to a different standard? Maybe. But that's maybe the world that she's living in. And on the question of who she is, people are understanding that a little bit more. But what she will do, the question about her legislative priorities, name one, there, there wasn't one. I think that the word salad stuff gets on my nerves. I think that some of the evasions are not necessary. But when she's talking about trying to get you a house, I believe her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kamala Harris participated in a one-person debate last night. 
and she lost. Okay, she was. <laughs> Look, friends, when Anderson Cooper has to fact check a sitting vice president on live television, something unprecedented is happening. The CNN panels ripping her performance, the circular answers, the nervous laughter, it all points to a campaign in free fall. But here's what I want to know from you. Was this town hall the real reason for yesterday's deliberate Hitler comparison? Share your thoughts in the comments below.